Hi guys, welcome to a long time vlog. I haven't vlogged for a long, long time. And uh, because of COVID and all that crap, um, but welcome back to Tumbleweed 16. This video today is brought to you by uh, absolutely no one because uh, I've got no one to sponsor the video. So if you want to sponsor the videos, get in touch. Anyway, we're here today at Snetterton for the British Touring Car Practice. Uh, been a long, long time uh, since we've been here. And uh, yeah, really uh, looking forward to it. Um, so you all know what touring cars is all about. Um, so we're currently on FP1. Um, got here a little bit late, but in time for the touring cars, which is the main thing, is what we're here to see, um, as well as some of the other support races. So I filmed some cars. I filmed a thing. Unfortunately, we have literally no access to anything today due to COVID. Um, but Snetterton have been absolutely brilliant. They're all social distanced. Um, there's a lot of people here. Uh, they say about 4,000 today. Um, I can see that. But yeah. Um, so we're here, watching the racing. Enjoy. So yeah, we're back here. We've just had a walk around the shop, so I didn't film anything because it wasn't really anything worth filming. First round, the championship. Here's further three rounds to come as well. But three cars. Go flash. Got nothing else you want to add to like subscribe to someone? Yeah, subscribe to me, Elliot Webber, the Bay Channel. Not here, so they take the trip to Scotland again in August. It's first time I've vlogged in over two years, so a bit rusty. We've got now the minis. We missed the Junior Juniors, but they're back out again later anyway, so not really too fast on that. But yeah, minis. Go Max. And again, it's very helpful. Uh, I don't know if you just call that, but uh, Nicholas Hamilton just had a bit of a spin in front of us. Um, I don't know how much of it I got, but you'll see if I did. Uh, anyway, it's uh, FP2 at the moment, and uh, at the moment I've shown some quickish. Um, I haven't really vlogged much today because it's been really hot. Uh, so I've just been sitting here chilling, just taking in the atmosphere of being at Snetterton and uh, being trackside that we haven't been for for a long, long time. As you probably gathered from my last vlog was Snetterton two years ago. So anyway, see you soon. Adam Morgan remains down in pit lane. Oh, 
Championship leader, so Jake Hill has now jumped up into what's going to be fourth place. So great luck there from Jake, no uh, problem. There we go. Well, Who's the thing uh, from the corner uh, earlier on? Impartial. That's why everyone. <laughs> Even Andy Nate. Ingram and Shedden, who still remains quickest on a, a 156.1 with uh, anyway, uh, 14 minutes yeah. now remaining so within this FP2, second free practice uh, session. Little, my, my monkeys. But, uh, Good point, oh, well, in the pit lane that well. many teams will be looking to save tires, so they're not going to be putting them through the paces uh, in this uh, practice session. They'll do what they need to do, making sure the tires are good and everything set up uh, as perfect as it possibly can be know, for qualifying, but and, uh, it will be the yeah. form of the weekend uh, because the, the, the weather and the tires so, will really take a pound, and especially around this circuit, which is three miles in length, there's many a corner, the straights as well. It's, it's, it's a very busy circuit. It's fair to be staying on to uh, it's very nice to be trackside yeah, again, I must admit. Cool off it? It's very nice to be trackside. Yeah. 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 And it's stuff in his face, as normal. He's just building the gap then, as they come round to complete lap number one. And let's uh, identify what the gap will be at the end of this lap. But already, the man in fourth place now is really starting to struggle. So uh, it's like uh, what's going to be Oliver Gray. He's going to be under pressure then in the number 63 machine. He's got a long line of cars uh, to try and defend from. And that's a big class. Oh, look at that over there. there. That's the number 11 machine, which was trying to push out. That's a bit naughty. Really charged on this lap towards the back of James Headley. So let's see if anything's going to happen as they come towards the line at the completion of lap number two. Uh, further back, there's a good battle going on as well for what looks to be, I think that's eighth place from what I can see. So that's uh, Abby Pullin, who has done fairly well off the, uh, the start. She has stayed in back where she was, but uh, she's got now some big pressure from behind because the number five machine is not too far adrift. That's Joel Grandpa's. And also right there as well is Matthias Zagazetta. So watch out for those three cars who very shortly will cross the line. But for second and third, the gap has definitely come down. It's halved on that lap between James Headley. So we just had the F4 race. I filmed some of it. Uh, it was pretty good. Uh, just normal F4 procession, really. Um, but now we've got the Genetic Juniors. Always a good race. I filmed a little bit. Um, we're quite near the end of the lap, so they normally spread out by the time they get to us. Um, and now the new third place man, Aston Miller, and again on this lap, the gap has continued to come down because 1.5 seconds will be surely less than a second at the completion of this lap as they head their way up towards the line. Third, fourth and fifth also exit Murray's corner. I'm wondering if Will Jenkins is under attack here from Liam McNeil. We have the gap closer between those two as well. Aston Miller's not getting away. I think Will Jenkins is going to try and fight back here on the run down towards Richie. He's Aston Miller keeping that car really tight to the arm car up against the pit wall. So we just had the Ginetta Juniors uh, just in some under safety car because of an accident. Uh, didn't film very much. Maybe had a bit of a go filming, so we'll see that. It's sad. Um, anyway, time now for the qualifying. 25 minute qualifying. Um, and then the top 10 shootout. Top 10. First time they've done it. And a uh, bit F1 style, I suppose you've got Q1 and Q2, yeah. pretty, pretty much, so um, um, predictions always, well, so it's got to be a Honda one, um, the, uh, and I think he's been flying, I'm going to go with Ingram as well as an outsider, but Shedden, what do you reckon? I'm going to go for Tom Ingram. Uh, he seems to have, he seems to get used to that car a lot more than he has with the Toyota. And he's been very consistent so far. He's been uh, first and second, I think, in both practice sessions. So, yeah, I'm going for, for Tingle. 
get yourselves one of them. It's a great souvenir. So it's the Follow me. Who are you going for? Uh, Nick Hamilton. The Quick Fit British Touring Car Championship. So Jade it's worth Edwards the £5. Jess Hawkins. Jess Hawkins. So you can get one of those. And, um, Not a bad shout. They're going to have a nice little shootout of their own, I think. I think you can find there. Yeah. I think they're going to have a nice little going to be sort of. They're going to be battling out for the 20th spot, I reckon. They're yeah, good, though. Yeah. I don't need to ask Chris, but I'm this old man over here. Oi, Grammarly, turn around. You're on the vlog. We are now sold out here at Oh. So only people that have tickets will be allowed. There's a hat now, let me zoom in. Extreme close up! Whoa! Yeah, Tingram. We'll just block out the rest of that. Oh, um, you can now start were, eating anything. I'll put a warning yeah, up for that after that. Anyway, we'll have a look at some Hamilton pictures, we'll action. film some, and uh, we'll go from there. The but it's course, very, very hot. Great coverage. Very hot. <laughs> You'll not miss a, a minute of the action now, but uh, Colin Turkington is the quickest. Ingram's still second, he's still circulating, and Gordon Shedden, another one in the pit, but in third place. On the front is fourth. We've got the center point to the leads across the line, uh, Jade Edwards. So those two are going to work out ten as well. But Turkington is being pushed back out, so he feels he needs to go for another black and white flag as well for number 16. Again. Three minutes left on the clock. Who is currently out of the top ten? Well, Dan Rowbottom is one of with just under three minutes to go. He's not in the next 30 seconds, so this is disastrous. Josh Cook is also another man out of the pace. We've got uh, as well. a minute and a half to go then. Colin Turkington is still quick. It's Tom Ingram and uh, Tom Olipad possibly being pushed down, but they're not going to make it back round. So we're now looking to see who can improve. Warren Butcher, as we said, up into what's going to be. He's down in 14th place as well. Uh, Jack Goff is in 13th place. Who else JP's is on a flyer. Of... Who else is improving through the sectors? Well, watch out for Rory Butcher because it's been a best for him in sector one. Losing out slightly. So that was uh, the end of F um, of course, F three qualifying. qualifying, that's the end of the qualifying with the top 10. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hand you over to edit Webber because, because you've got to subscribe to his YouTube channel because he won't do it otherwise. Um, he's going to run you down the top 10 and the runners and riders and everything else is going there because basically I'm old and my memory's not that good. So, the top 10 of Colin Turkington, Tom Ingram, Gordon Shedden, Tom Oliphant, Rory Butcher, Jake Hill, Ollie Jackson, Stephen Jelly, Dan Lloyd, and Adam Morgan, I believe, uh, were the ones that made it to the top ten. As I said in my vlog, which you should definitely check out, uh, the heavy hitters who did not make it to qualifying were Ash Sutton, Josh Cook, and Jason Plato. Three drivers there who definitely should have been in that top ten. Maybe even all of them in the top five, but they haven't made it. Ash Sutton's car did not sound healthy at all. His bonnet was up. And uh, yeah, so that's that. Uh, as for Josh Cook, not too sure what happened. Maybe couldn't get a lap in. Maybe he might be struggling with the weight. He is currently second in the standings. Well, it is. As for Plato, uh, he said uh, after FP2 that he had a setup change, so maybe he got the setup wrong uh, in qualifying. But yeah, so that has three heavy hitters out now. We'll just wait. Uh, guy, a big shout out to Paul. I'd have to say would be Turkington, Tingram, and Gordon Shed, and they are, they are looking at the top three quickest drivers, obviously, because they were the top three in qualifying, and I wouldn't be surprised if they were the top three in the top ten shootout. My pick for pole is still Tom Ingram. I think he, he surprised everyone at Thruxton by pulling that high end eye, probably where it shouldn't be at the minute. It probably is still a, a, a lower top ten car. Definitely shouldn't be where it is, so I think that just shows how good Tom Ingram is. So I'm still going to go for a Tom Ingram pole position in the high end eye. Outlap again, so the next one is going to have to be the quick one. After that, you'll only get one more, whether uh, Tom Ingram or whereas, sorry, Tom Ingram and Ollie Jackson will not get another lap after this one, so this needs to be perfect now. As they go through, Tom Ingram goes quicker than anyone, and so does Gordon Shedd, and they go into the front row of the grid. So anything Colin Turkington can do, Shedden and Ingram can do as well. So the Honda Civic goes quickest on a 155.4. Scrap that because Colin Turkington in the BMW has responded with a 155.37. Personal best in sector one. Jay Kill comes into the final corner as well. Currently, he's down in 10th place with a maximum success ballast of 75 kilos. But Jay Kill now up towards the line. He's done a personal best in sector one and sector two. He crosses the line and Jay Kill does go any higher. No, it stays where he is. So it's 1.2. That's as far as Jay Kill will go, I'm afraid to say, because I think 
you may see the check of flag. In fact, no, it's going to get one more lap. It's just about. England goes through, stays third. Jackson goes through and proves the fourth place. What's the line to take the check of flag? It's got a check of Anyway, that was the end of uh, qualifying and um, what an end of qualifying that was. Uh, two or three cars all sitting underneath. Three cars sitting under the lap record in qualifying. Um, and that was absolutely awesome. I think this is the future for touring cars. I love the 10 minute of the showdown, the 10 car showdown. I think it's absolutely brilliant. Maybe extend it to 15 cars, I don't know. But I like the Q2, I like the two qualifying. Really enjoying it. Hey, Libby. Hi. Uh, um, so, yeah, um, we'll give you a rundown, but call me Mystic Mac because I predict these things. Uh, um, Shedham's pole um, under the lap record, so we'll set it, we'll run you down the top 10. So, yeah, eventful qualifying. Um, very unexpectedly, I have to say, Gordon Shedden is on pole by a tenth ahead of Colin Turkington. Colin, the qualifying master that he is, reigning Wingfoot Award champion, a winner. Um, please, what I was say. Yeah, um, so Turkington, out of the block straight away, was set in fast lap times. Uh, he got the lap record, I think, by about four tenths at the end, then Shedden topped it again very, uh, at the last second. So, yeah, Tom Ingram P3, kind of expected from his pace in, in, in qualifying. So, yeah, so the top three is Gordon Shedden, Colin Turkington, and Tom Ingram. Jake Hill, uh, the current championship leader, obviously carrying Max and Ballas. He uh, went to P8 at, right at the end of the session. So, good work for Jake Hill to be P8. Let's see uh, what all they can do in, uh, in the races tomorrow. Thank you very much for the roundup. <laughs> anyway, we've got um, some Porsches mm -hmm. next. Um, I haven't really videoed much today, unfortunately, due to Long simple fact it's been now, really hot. Um, and I've just been watching, just digging it all in, just taking in the uh, atmosphere. So we'll enjoy it. Take care. I'll we'll see you soon. Porsches next for qualifying. Um, uh, we're, we're enjoying this. We've got a few people supporting this year. Um, of course, the Dan Kamish, Archie Hamilton. And um, who's your mate that you like? Harry King. Oh yeah, yeah, Harry King as well. That this man here seems to have got a, uh, a, a bit of a bit of a fancy for. I think. Oh yeah, not like that. No, he's just he's a good, he's, he's really nice chap, and he's been chatting a lot. Of I am going to go for a Harry King pole position, reigning champion. Um, Mega genera generational talent, in my opinion. Um, obviously, he's got one year experience compared to the rest of the guys in the pro category. Of course, there's guys like Dan Camish, James Dawling, Kean Jewis, very high profile drivers coming in through the ranks. I do think it will be Harry King on pole position. Um, and I think he is going to be. He, I don't think he'll dominate this season as much as he did last year because there are, the, the competition is a lot better than it was last year. No disrespect to him last year in the Porsches, but yeah, I think it will be. Harry King once again on all positions. Lovely. I'm going to get some filming of this actually because this year's Porsche's colours of these cars are absolutely immense. Are, um, probably one of the, some really, really good liveries this year. Better than any touring car. No, except for Richard Parfitt, who is awesome. Um, I'll put a certain picture in here. Um, but anyway, um, I'm going to do a rundown anyway later on of maybe my favourite liveries of the car. So. All right. Take care. Oh, look, oh, look, look. Libby's eating as well, look. Do you want to talk to me or do you need something to talk to me? So, yeah, we're enjoying it. Libby, how are you finding it? Good. Good. Just good. I don't know. You like the shops, though, don't you? Yeah, you bought some things at the shops, didn't you? What about from a driver's point of view? Anyway, speak to you soon. Take care.
covered by just over a second. So that is how close. And uh, Lawson Hannafin is definitely one of those. And of course, we're not ruling out the rookies that are here this year as well. And Josh Bailin and also the number uh, 32 machine of James Dawlin. Champions in other forms of racing. And now looking to be their best within the Porsche Cup. And Dan Callis, yes he can, best of anyone is to start a flying lap. Harry King though, down in fourth place, last year's champion, so he has work to do in car number 19. Uh, more work to do now, because I'm... This place now, I think, can do exactly the same. Expected, but mostly... We're missing, we're missing. And... I think he continues to worry that. But yeah, I thought that was a, a long, long, hard task in race number one tomorrow because for now it looks like that car will sit on the outside of race number four. No, did you get it? And with the checker flag now out, that means the car has run out. They'll charge up this light incline in towards Coram, then they'll head back down in towards the final corner of Murray's. But yeah, very close between the top two. Slight gap now between second and third, but it is for the race lead that we have the battle and could be a good toe to be gained here from Max Bird as he comes up to complete lap number one. But will the arms and elbows be out from the race leader? Car number 11, Sam Weller. Well, not at the minute because Max Bird is not trying to make an attack. He dabs the brakes just to make sure he's got some as they head in towards the first corner once again. He's brought that gap down. It's just around about a quarter of a mile. The man who moved ahead of Max uh, Coates has now got him for company Max as Coates well. So they are the next battle behind. But, uh, down in towards the left-hander. Still, Sam Weller that leads. But is that gap going to be cut to anything less than a quarter of a second? Possibly going to be about the same because now it's going to be the battle for second and third. It's a great round out the final corner there for Lewis Brown. Can he get anything done on the inside line? If you do, it's going to be a great move. But for now, they just sit and wait their turn as they go in towards the first corner. Top seven. Had a bit of a move because the sun was really hot. So we moved through it further round and we're closer to the exit now, which is literally just there. So we're at uh, Nelson on the S's and Brundle, Brundle into Nelson. Uh, on the S is here. I'm going to get out of the car in a minute, I'll film some in a second, but uh, we're halfway through the mini race and I don't know who's winning. Uh, Lewis Brown. Lewis Brown's winning. Um, no, I couldn't see who the other ones were. Max Burns. And then we've got Max Coates, who we support in fifth. That's who we're really worried about. So I'll get some video in a second because it's quite a nice place to sit. So I'll see what you do it. Battery's flat on the uh, on my battery, my memory card's full, and to be honest, it's hot. I can't be able to go and get it, so we're here on the phone with very, very poor sound because my speakers are broken. I need to get a new phone to it. But anyway, here we are with the GT Super Cup. 